Hello everyone and welcome to Campus Channel. I'm here with Grenoble École de Management and we're going to be talking about the Advanced Master in Digital Strategy Management. In order to talk about it, I have the pleasure to welcome two guests of honor. The first one, the Program Director, James Barisic, and one of his students, uh, Ajar Medari. They are both here to answer my questions, but first we're going to start with the pitch. The pitch, James, is a 60-second talk in which you're going to have to tell us everything that we need to know about your program. Are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be. Well, then I'm, I'm listening. So it's a 15-month program in alternance um, that gives you all of the, uh, the key subjects in a big digital um, uh, project from digital communications, social media, content creation, through to uh, analytics, um, to uh, digital knowledge uh, management strategy, um, geopolitics, mental health, all, so, all the things that you need to do if you're going to manage a big digital project in an agile way. That's less than 60 seconds. It, it is, but it's okay because we have 30 minutes more to talk about it, so let's move on to the program. Hey. One thing you haven't told us yet, it's uh, <clears throat> the program has a new location. Uh, it's going to be, well, maybe you can tell us where, why it has changed, and has anything else within this master? Okay, so um, we've got a new campus um, being built right now in Pontin, which is um, within Greater Paris. Um, it's just at the end of one of the metro lines in the northeast of Paris. Um, it's uh, a, a stunning, uh, eco friendly building. It's got gardens on top, it's wood wood based on the outside, um, loads of light, loads of space. Um, for the last few years, we, we've been either in another campus or we've been sharing a campus. So this is going to be the first time we're going to have our own um, big space, uh, loads of uh, new areas for students and uh, cafeteria and all sorts of, it's a stunning, stunning new location. You mentioned the pitch, it's a 15 month part time program. Yeah. Why would you pick that option over the full-time program? How does it benefit your students? Okay, so the, the, the big benefit is being able to learn and then put that straight into practice. If you're on a full-time program, um, and full-time programs work great for some people. I've done full-time degrees before and I've done part-time degrees before. But the big difference is when you're doing an alternates program, you learn, you go straight into work and you can try the stuff that you've learned. So you're not waiting uh, for a year until you can put it into practice. And, and the, uh, the dig digital strategy management course is very, very practical. So being able to immediately go out, go into work and test the skills that you've learned the week before is a really great way of learning. Testing your skills, I can see you nodding. You're like, yeah, that's very true. Do you see any other advantages or not? It is actually very true that you just directly put into practice what you learned. Um, the advantage is, is that, for example, when you start working somewhere, you don't necessarily have the knowledge because you just start out. And uh, throughout the courses, you learn more. And the more you learn, the more you practice, the more you're good at it. And how is it, I mean, how difficult is it to like split your life between the company on one side and the school on the other side? It is actually, for my case, for example, very like um, diverse since when I'm at school, I'm just at school and I don't have to work uh, apart from my what I have to do at work uh, at school. And when I'm at work, I'm 100 percent there. So it's not that difficult to like combine. So a digital strategy management, is it a general management program or a specialist master? It's kind of both. Um, in the sense that it is very, very digitally focused and all the skills are very digitally focused. Um, and we also have these the sort of key management skills that make a great manager rather than just an ordinary manager. Um, so uh, we have things like um, geoeconomic, geoeconomy and geopolitics. So if you're um, uh, working in uh, distributed um, teams across countries, you can understand uh, the importance of uh, how to deal with different cultures and, and all sorts of legal things that go with it. Uh, we've got um, uh, a course on mental health, so you can understand how to uh, manage the, the stresses within a team, uh, ethics and sustainability. But, but the, 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 the main part of the course is, is absolutely um, focused on, on, on digital topics. But the, the key to it for me is that, so, so it is in that sense very specialised, but it's also general in the sense that um, we give people a, a, a toolbox. Um, one of the things that for me is really important is not to be not to feel that you're stuck in a job 
I mean, some of us are really lucky to find a job that we really want to do for the rest of our lives. Others have been through that thing where for the 15th, 16th Monday in a row, you're thinking to myself, I can't get out of bed. I can't do it. Can't, don't want to go in. Don't want to do it. But we're kind of stuck in that, in that thing. But if you've got a toolbox, which we're going to give people, then you can wake up on that Monday and think, do you know what? Today is the day where I decide to use these skills that I've got to find another job that will make my life more fulfilled. So it's, it is both specialist and general in that sense. What made you choose this program? Well, um, besides coming from a different background, it is a tool that I wanted to have, a skill that I wanted to have to add to my experience as a, as a chemist, uh, to be able to go on with my life and have my own projects and be able to manage all of it at the same time. It's a huge addition. What is digital strategy management on one side and how is it different from any other kind of management? Well, I, I think what a good um, digital strategy manager can do is understand all the parts of the project. Um, so you need to be able to understand um, what your analytics team are doing, what the content creation team are doing, um, the, the people that are, that are managing your, your um, digital knowledge systems, what they're doing. You don't have to be a, a specialist in all of them, but you have to need to know what people are meant to deliver. So SEO teams, the advertising teams and so on. Um, and so, so from that point of view, digital companies have got a quite a specific way of working, um, quite often to do with the way they've been set up and the fact they've been set up by engineers and so on. So they have a kind of a, a, a uh, agile way of working um, that isn't often replicated in some other businesses. Um, so it's not a normal, um, it's not a sort of generalized management uh, issue. It, it's about really understanding those digital elements within a project um, and not just saying, okay, um, you know, you're the expert in that, you go off and do it, and then just leaving it and hoping it happens, but actually understanding what's meant to happen so that you can manage the process properly. And one last question for, for this part, for this part. During the admission process, how do you make sure that your students have real values and are not going to go, I don't know, all, all Mark Zuckerberg on us? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, yeah, okay. That's a really interesting question. Um, Mark Zuckerberg is a fine, fine person and he would be welcome to apply for the course. <laughs> sure and I would, would, I would judge his application the same as anyone else's. Um, uh, we, we've got, um, uh, we've, I mean, I, I'm sure he would be really interested. We do have a section on ethics and sustainability, which is really important because, as I say, it's not just <coughs> um, the, 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 the digital parts, but to be a good manager, you need to understand you know, how to do things properly, uh, which he obviously does because he's very rich and I don't want to be sued. <laughs> um, but, um, uh, but, but it, it, the, the, these, these elements, although we have, um, specific modules on them. They run through the course. You know, it, it's not, um, I, I, I talk, I talk about this idea, you know, that, that at the end of it, we can do something that's socially useful as well. Um, and that, and that's quite an important thing. And it's, it, it, it it's, it's like a golden thread that runs through the whole thing. Okay. Was that, was that an important part for you to have that ethics, those values that were like, yes. was <clears throat> part of this massive, it's not, it's not just like one specific course, exactly. it's more like it's in it. Yeah, because uh, when you learn one specific like skill, it is used in the in the modern world like as a job. But then again, uh, you need all of it. You need to know, to have like some knowledge in every part so that you can manage a lot of stuff at the same time. It has to be a whole package and not just you being specified in something precisely. I guess. All right. I guess the first cliche that we debunk is that. You can be as old as Mark Zuckerberg and still apply to this Edmunds Master. And for those who let's move on to the cliches. All right, so the cliches are about preconceptions that you might have had before applying or once you've applied regarding digital strategy, regarding Grenoble Ecole Management, I don't know, you name it. As a, what would be the first cliche that comes to your mind? The first cliche would be that you have to come from a marketing background or have some background in digital or 
any commerce or anything. That is not true because I myself am a uh, chemical engineer that has now reconverted in digital marketing. All right, and what about the other students? Because you could be like the exception. That is not true. Uh, anyone could uh, go on and add a skill to their experience because it's not just um, removing everything that you've learned. It's an addition that I think is mandatory for everyone to know. Oh, that's a Can I add something yes, to that? Obviously. I think f from an employment point of view, um, it's actually really useful for employer if you've got a candidate that's got more than one skill because it makes them that much better. Um, we've got, uh, we've, I, I've already accepted some engineers for next year, um, uh, but, but when you are, um, you know, there is the sort of, there's the traditional candidates for, certainly for digital comms jobs, will have a particular, um, uh, a particular uh, route into the job, which will be digital comms, digital comms, digital comms, digital comms. But imagine if you are running a big, um, pharmaceutical company, right? And you've got someone, a candidate, who um, has got training in pharmaceuticals yeah. and who also has training in digital comms, digital management, and all the rest of it. That's a really persuasive combination. So um, I'm always excited when I've got candidates that have got other non-traditional backgrounds. I love the ones that have got traditional backgrounds <laughs> too, <laughs> but, um, but it, 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 it adds something extra into the class if, if people have got other backgrounds that they can bring into the class as well. All right, so don't limit yourself to background before applying. No, definitely not. And the other cliche? Uh, the other one is um, it's a, it's a, almost a bit bizarre one, and, and it's that you have to be able to speak French to come and study in, in, in Paris or in France. Um, there are, I mean, first of all, our course is entirely in English. Um, the school is a bilingual school, so the staff can speak English and French um, as a minimum. Um, <laughs> but also, um, there are a lot of companies, especially companies that work internationally, who use English as their language in the office because it is the shared language amongst all of the offices around the world. And so um, it, it, it's entirely possible to come to study in English and to work in English and to live in Paris. Obviously, it's also helpful if you've got a bit of French to deal with the administrative stuff, yeah. but that's a separate issue. Um, but it's entirely possible to, to, to come and do that. Yeah, some French words like baguette, croissant, and I guess that's pretty much it, doesn't it? Yeah, that's all you need. That's all you need. Cafe. Yeah, that's cafe, it. Cafe garçon. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. Yeah, and now they know everything they need to know, so no more excuses. <laughs> and uh, for, well, I mean, we talk about like speaking in English, and well, that's why we're going to talk about like studying abroad as well. So James, you mentioned international students or, and how they could be able to come and study in France without speaking French. What's the mix of international and French students in the classroom? Uh, that depends on the year. Um, we've <laughs> yeah. had, um, so during the, the two year period that we don't like to talk about uh, when everyone was at home, uh, it, was, it was mainly predominantly French students and, and also for the year afterwards because travel was restricted. Um, it can be uh, anywhere between um, half and 60, 70% French students, or, or, you know, as I say, be half foreign students. Um, equally, uh, the lecturers, I'm thinking on my feet here, so I'm trying to work out where all the lecturers are from, but the vast majority of our lecturers aren't from France. They're not. No. no. They're I'm not. just trying to think. I can think of one lecturer that's from France. Mathieu, yeah. yeah. Um, but after that, I don't think... That, no. No. So most of them aren't, aren't French. So what's the... All right, so they're not French, the one thing. What else do they have? What are their soft skills? How would you describe them, those teachers? Um, they're very experienced. The fact that it's not uh, a traditional, normal teacher that just, like, does courses in schools. Uh, they actually have life experiences that they try to, like... Um, pass on to us and it's an, it's actual like skills used in everyday life that will help us eventually in our uh, journey. And with so many, I don't know, would say academic background, different nationalities, what's the atmosphere like within the students? Very fun because everyone uh, is happy to be their own and everyone, no one is judged to be, to come or to speak or to 
do anything of their country or their whatever it is culture. Uh, so it's very welcoming. It's very uh, friendly. Everything is perfect. All right. Even though you, I mean, part time is at the company, part time is at the school. You still have, I don't know, time to create some real yeah. boundaries, which has some, yeah. We have we have created boundaries, beautiful yeah. friendships that uh, I think are going to last. All right, okay. Uh, and what's the amount of work required if you want to pass? I mean, if you want to pass, obviously. I know that your program director is watching you and like probably... <laughs> yeah, this could be really awkward, right? Evalua <laughs> evaluating <laughs> the quality of your answer. Well, you do have to work a lot. <laughs> we do... Ha no, it's actually, uh, I think in comparison to other uh, programs, we do have to work a lot, uh, which is completely normal because um, the um, subjects we treat are very time consuming and very important and technical. So it, it's normal that you need to take a bit more time to uh, look into them and do them to the perfection. And if you have to, to, to give us in like, I don't know, a quantity, it would be like what, like 50 hours a week? Oh. 40 hours a week? Uh, I would I, say it obviously depends on the kind of really student depends. you are, obviously, but like roughly. It would uh, roughly be like, uh, 15 hours a week would be enough for All you. Right, on a like, personal work? Personal on a personal, work. yeah, okay, of course. What national, international recognition does this program have, James? Are you well ranked? That's, that would be the, okay, the other way to ask the question. First first I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to say that we, we've, we are um, ranked second in France. Um, and we are um, currently, I think, we're sixth in Europe. Yes. Um, but we're waiting for the, the next so the 2023 coming out quite soon, I think. Um, so we're second in France and uh, sixth in Europe. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a really well-respected course. Um, and, you know, I, I think part of that, you know, going back to, to the question that you were just asked is, you know, it, it's, we're not shy of the fact that it's not necessarily the easiest course. All right. And so employers know that they're going to get someone who's got some real skills at the end of it. Um, I have this slightly horrible expression that I'm still not quite happy with. I always say at the beginning of the, the, the course, it's not sweets. Um, you're, you've, got, you've, you've earned the right to come and try and get a degree. Um, and if you're good enough, you're going to get the degree. Everyone's good enough because they work hard because <laughs> they understand because I picked them. They understand what the deal is. Um, but, it's, um, but yeah, employers understand that you know, they're, they're getting um, graduates of, of quality when, when, when our students graduate. It's like high work, high, high reward, something yeah, like that. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and last questions before we move on to who am I? Why study digital strategy in France? How is it relevant for an international or French, I mean, or French, but specifically to an international student? To, the, to those ones who are watching, actually, why should they come to France to study? Well, you know, France has got, um, it, we, we're right at the heart of Europe, um, first of all. I mean, we, there is amazing market on our doorstep. Um, you know, the, one of the richest markets in the world. Uh, we have a, 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 the, the single market, which gives us great opportunities to learn how to, um, to to work in between countries with minimum minimum friction, but also with cultural differences and so on. Um, it is, I mean, you know, let's be honest. We're in Paris, right? You get to spend 15 months in Paris. Who wouldn't want that anyway? You know, it's, it's the most beautiful city in the world. Um, We've all watched Emily in Paris. We can't disagree. <laughs> but the same let's, thing. Let's, the, the, I mean, we can do another 12 programmes on the merits of Emily in Paris. And I don't want to address that right now. Um, but um, yeah, but it's a, it's a, you know, it's a stunning place to come and to, to come and study. And, you know, there are some great tech companies here. They're there. They're, we, we always seem to have some students from the fashion industry as well. So there are these really big, iconic industries in France. And at the end of the day, um, the skills that we, that, we, that we have, and I think the, the fashion industry is a great example of that, is they are digital skills, but they are relevant to all industries. And we've got some amazing businesses here, big international businesses um, based in Paris. Um, you know, it, it, with the transport system you can get every we get to the get to get to your office easily most days um yeah i think you need to put something in the comments to explain why that's funny <laughs> today um but um you know it, it it's 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 a fantastic place to work it's a fan fantastic place to come and study brand new campus and everything as well 
But, you know, apart from anything else, 15 months in Paris. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, it says it all. That's it, isn't it? <laughs> that's, it does. Yeah. And, well, so those few words says it all. However, sometimes a picture speaks more than a thousand words. That's why we've created Who Am I? Who am I? I'm going to introduce you to three personalities, and you will have to tell me which one, according to the two of you, suits the best. I mean, not pick the same one, maybe, but we will see if, if you don't have, if you want to pick the same one, you can. Okay, the three personalities are going to appear on my right. So basically, uh, Grenoble Ecole de Management is about a business lab for society. That's the catchphrase. And it's about digital as well. And I was wondering what this lab could create. And uh, with a link with digital. And I thought of the three personalities, let's say ChatGPT, uh, that could be a creation of one of your students, maybe, I don't know, or maybe one of the company they would work for. Uh, you know, it's a, a generative pre-trained transformer commonly called ChatGPT, a chatbot launched by OpenAI. Uh, not Mark Zuckerberg, but yeah. <laughs> uh, in the middle, the, the Terminator, maybe like when you work in digital, you have to work with computer as well. Maybe you're gonna create and order computers. This one was created to hurt people, but he ended up saving the world. So maybe that's what like the, the ethics and the values that you, you mentioned could be useful for. And the last one, she is Katherine Johnson. Maybe you've heard of her. Mm. Uh, she was an American mathematician whose calculation of orbital mechanics as a NASA employee were critical to the success of the first and uh, the, the, yeah, the first and subsequent US crewed space flight. Basically, she helped uh, the, the plane land on the moon. It's not a plane, but you get the idea. And uh, yet she was uh, noted uh, for historic historical role as one of the first African-American women to work as a NASA scientist. Maybe it's when like the machine works for the human, like, you know, once you've created those students, they can actually make that very useful like calculus and, and, and use the machine for the human well-being, basically. So that would be my explanation, obviously, but yours are way more interesting. So, James, what would be your choice? It's, it's, this is quite easy. It's going to be Catherine Johnson, All um, right. but purely um, uh, for experience, right? Um, when I'm putting together a classroom, um, because it, it is putting together a classroom, it's, it's not just like um, uh, people sitting in chairs. It, we're trying to create a community of people who can learn from each other. It's about the, the experiences that we can all bring, right? If I've got 35 students in the room and a lecturer, there are 36 students in the room. We all learn from each other. That's really, really important. It's, it's, the, it's right at the heart of what we do. And so um, 100% Catherine Johnson's coming into the, 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 the classroom. But I would also say... Where's Mark? No, but I would, but, but but Barack Obama can come in as well. Uh, I'll I'll let him come in as well. I'll, I'll make space for Barack Obama. But um, I, I would also just say on on your three, um, ChatGPT is definitely not allowed in my classroom, yeah. and I will explain why. Right? No. I did a thing the other day. I put it on LinkedIn. If you search through my old LinkedIn stuff, you will find it. Um, where I asked three times, I asked ChatGPT to explain who I am. Right. And on three separate occasions, it might be four, I can't remember, um, it, 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 four, it gave me a doctorate from various other institutions. Now, here's a funny thing. I don't have a single doctorate, <laughs> but now I have, um, uh, I think, three doctorates from various institutions in the UK, including one in psychology and uh, <laughs> one from um, the University of Queensland. So on the basis that uh, it doesn't check its facts properly, uh, ChatGPT is absolutely banned and not allowed in the classroom, and Catherine Johnson can come in. All oh, right. Is it because like the university, you, you wish it was like Oxford and Cambridge, so you were like, well, uh, I, 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 I don't think they I gave it. No, I can I, only uh, accept a doctorate from Cambridge or Oxford. Otherwise no, it's just... I didn't think I got, uh, I thought I got Strathclyde. <laughs> Um, there was there was Strathclyde. There was another one in Glasgow. I'd written for and you've an never amazing been there ever. No, oh, no, okay. no. So uh, so yeah. So in terms of experience, uh, Catherine Johnson. In terms of lack of experience, that <laughs> G GTP can, can go. All right, as I normally <laughs> it leaves you with the Terminator, but you can pick Catherine Johnson as well. I was gonna. Yeah. yeah, I know you were. I saw you were like very disappointed. So maybe you can give us another explanation. Well, it was it was mainly because of the background and how. Acceptant, it is acceptant. Exceptional. Exceptional. <laughs> That's not what it means. No. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Uh, 
how accepting the, the environment is oh, okay. to uh, an African and American woman, but also Terminator, because he is creating some very, very good digital marketers for the future. But don't you find he would be far too quiet? No. He'd be too quiet in the classroom. He's scary. He's scary, but he, he, he doesn't add anything. He's just sitting That's there quietly. That's true. He never talks. He's, he's not a... It's not an inclusive <laughs> that sharing is true. the thing. We're taking Catherine. You're taking Catherine. Uh, sorry, we're taking Catherine. think he's inclusive? I think he's inclusive. Like he's saving the world. He's saving the, the like all the human. He's saving the world. And now you want us to to <laughs> stop him doing that when he should be out there saving the world. Let him yeah. get on with that. All right. He's fine doing that. <laughs> we're taking Catherine. <laughs> we're taking Catherine. You can keep Chat GPT. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> I will keep this too, and I will leave you with Catherine. <laughs> Let's go to after. One question you might have asked your student, James, before they've applied is, what makes you a good student for this program? I'm sure you might have asked a question. And my question would be, what makes you a good program director for this program? Wow. That's a tough question to throw at me right here. Is it? <laughs> um, um, and you would have picked Terminator. I wouldn't have that question. I'm joking. I'm <laughs> <laughs> what makes me a good program director? I hope. Um, I hope um, that I um, look out for my students and I fight for my students and they understand that I fight for them. Um, I hope that um, uh, that they benefit from the network that we've created. I mean, I, I think I think the reason one of the reasons why I'm slightly uneasy about the question, there are some things that I do but I'm not alone in doing them. So, you know, I am, I, I try and make myself available to the students if there's an issue or anything like that. Th that's important to me and try and facilitate there being a, 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 a sort of community, a sort of caring community amongst the students. Um, but I don't make the class. The students make the class. The lecturers make the class. I'm just like a tiny little part of that. Um, so if it works, it's not down to me, it's down to the students and it's down to the lecturers creating something that's bigger than all the individual bits. So I don't know what makes me a good programme director. I know that um, over the last three and a half years, four years, um, I've had some amazing students in our class and we've had some amazing lecturers and they create something amazing. Can you... I be a witness of that. But by that, I mean, can you tell that there's a you know, help between the students from different generations of students, for example? Because you said, like, within the class, really good atmosphere, students help each other, no matter where we come from, no matter our background. And uh, is it the same, like, for different, I don't know, different alumni students, for example, or different generations of students? Yeah, I would, uh, I wanted to add to that uh, about you that he's very understanding and uh, as you can tell the relationship he, he has with the with his students uh, he's very close to all of us so if anyone has a problem or anything we gladly go talk to him so that's not something you find uh, in every director i guess and uh, yeah of course uh, there is a relationship you can have access to like everyone that has been in the prior years there is a group on facebook there is a lot of stuff that you can like take part in ask them everyone is open to talk everyone is open to share their experiences linkedin is a good thing to do there are people on uh, a lot of alumni students that have been to gem uh, and they are very very helpful and willing to communicate do you know what you want to do once you've graduated uh i came in uh thinking I wanted to do my own project and that has not changed. That hasn't, so what would that project, if, um, unless it's just too secret? Even. Since I'm a chemical engineer, the idea is to create my own um, cosmetics brand right. uh, based on uh, natural products and bioproducts. And since I was not as good in mar digital marketing, I came in and I'm learning everything I need to do that on my own. All right, so you have an entrepreneur here, and what will other students do, for example? Um, a, a range of things. So we've, we've got um, people that go through to work in management consultancy. We've had people set up their own businesses. We've had people um, uh, work in publishing, um, work in the financial sector. Um, it, it's, it, it's 
it's a really, uh, they, they, uh, there is a presentation that I do, there is a bit at the end of it, what's your typical student, what do they go on and do? My typical student is, could be anyone, and what do they go on to do? All sorts of things. <laughs> because we give them a toolbox. We don't say, this is the one job that you have to do. We say, look, here's a load of skills, and you can go and do whatever you want with those. And they're really an empowering group of, uh, a group of tools. All right, and how has the job market of the digital industry evolved since, since COVID, or has it impacted the employment rate of your students? Is it like well, easy for you to place students wherever they want to be? Yeah, we've, we've got a really high uh, insertion level after, after the, the class. I mean, the reality is um, before COVID, there was a massive shortage of digitally skilled people. Um, COVID highlighted that there was a massive shortage of digitally skilled people and yes. currently there is a massively <laughs> massive shortage of digitally skilled people so it's the same issue it's just that it's much more visible now um, and I think a lot of businesses um, a lot of businesses that were reticent and uh, about doing something with digital before COVID suddenly realized they had to and so now we're in this period where businesses even when they're finding it difficult are actually investing in digital um, technologies and they want digitally skilled people and there aren't that many of them. Um, so it's not, I mean, it's not, you know, it's a difficult jobs market anyway, but out of all of the sectors, there's quite a few jobs out there in digital. And one last question before we move on to extra time. Give me, can you give me as a one reason why someone shouldn't join this program? Shouldn't? Yes. Because it's so amazing, you should not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's too amazing. It's too amazing. It's going to be too much fun. <laughs> so, 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 so the, the message would be: if you can't handle exceptional, don't apply. <laughs> don't come. Oh, okay, that, that's pretty. That's pretty clear. That's extra time. Two minutes for telling us maybe something that we haven't said yet, or maybe you want to emphasize of something that we've mentioned already. Uh, Aja, I will let you start. What would be your conclusion for this interview? I would say that uh, the world right now, the job market is transforming. We are living a very, uh, it's a, it is a very weird um, transformation in a very rapid way, but uh, jumping on the wave and Getting on with it is what we are doing. And uh, there are a lot of jobs to be taken in this uh, in digital marketing. So you might want to join. All right. Thank you, Aja. James? I mean, I think that I think we've said a lot of it. I, th I think that, you know, the, the, the we're in a, a moment that is very international it's it's very globalized um having people that understand that understand how to use digital understand how to you know one of the things we learned during covid is that you know in in companies people are all over the place mm -hmm. and all of a sudden we realized that having meetings where some of us in paris some of us in london some of us, some of us are in chicago and mm -hmm. some are in singapore it's, it's quite easy to do now but what's difficult to do is to understand how you manage all those, all, all the cultural differences and manage those parts of a big project um, across international boundaries. And I think that you know the, what we, what we, what we bring is is the ability to to give people the skills to be able to to uh, to. Um, to take part in that kind of project. And I think increasingly businesses are not just thinking about digital, they're thinking about how can we do things internationally to make the most of all the markets that are available to us. Um, so yeah, so I think that's probably what I'd highlight. All right. Probably. Well, probably, well, that's what you just did, so. We'll, we'll go with that. Then. Yeah, we'll go with that then. <laughs> all right, thank you, James. Thank you, Ajar. Well, if you can't handle exceptional, don't handle, but if you want to build a toolbox, if you want to, add new tools to your soft skills, your hard skills, and serve the wave, like I just said. Well, it's at Grenoble Cal de Management, Advanced Master, Specialized Master in Digital Strategy Management. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Hey.